Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about kit you need for your triathlon races. So first up we've got tri bars. You can get clip on one, you don't have to get a TT bike or anything like that. And what they'll do is they'll go onto your normal road bike handlebars. Even if you've got aero bars you can get adapters. And they're going to allow you to get lower and much more aero. You don't have to get super tucked in but they can make a big difference to your bike time. And obviously that's the longest time out of all of the disciplines usually. So if you haven't already, get some clip-on aero bars. They're not very expensive. I think you can get them for about 20 to 30 pounds of the cheapest aluminium ones. That's all you're gonna need uh, if you're just getting into the sport and you're not ready to invest into a TT bike. It's exactly what I did. Clip-on bars to start with, gonna knock off loads of time off your bike section. Next up, we've got triathlon suits. So this is an all-in-one suit you're gonna wear. It's got a pad in for the bike, so you don't have to wear bike shorts and it's usually a one piece, you can get them in two pieces, usually people go for short sleeves these days. And what it means is you can jump out the water, if it's a pool swim say, jump out the water, go straight into T1, don't have to get changed or anything, hop onto the bike and you're good to go. So you don't have to you know, put on extra layers or anything like that and mess around. So it's gonna take time with your transitions, it's gonna improve your overall time. And generally speaking, companies make really fast suits these days. You don't have to go top end, uh, but that nice aero uh, sort of skin tight advantage is going to make a big difference. So for this season, I've been using just a £70 tri suit just as an initial investment, and it's made a big difference. You can wear it under your wetsuit as well, whip your wetsuit off. Next up, we've got wetsuits. You're going to need one of these if you're racing in the UK. It's almost always mandatory to wear a wetsuit just because the temperatures are usually so low in the water, especially open water. So if you're doing a sprint distance, 400 meter swim, it's probably gonna be in the pool. So you don't have to wear a wetsuit and you're not allowed to wear a wetsuit usually in pool swims. So if you're just looking at sprints, ignore this one. If you're looking at Olympic or higher, you're gonna need a wetsuit because Olympic distance and higher usually almost always is open water. So uh, sea, river, lake, and especially like I say, if you're in the UK or a colder country, wetsuits are gonna be mandatory. And for a lot of new swimmers, the buoyancy helps with your swimming as well. So it's uh, it's not just about the warmth, it'll also make you a little bit quicker, especially if you're an inexperienced swimmer. So of course a wetsuit is mega essential because you won't be allowed to race in most of the events, apart from sprint, if you don't have one. So get one. Again, the wetsuit you get does not have to be expensive. A uh, hundred pounds or less is good. Second hand is good if you're just getting started and you're not sure if you wanna commit yet. If you think you're gonna commit and you're gonna do a bit of open water training as well, then sort of 150 pounds on sale, you can get some really, really good ones on sale for 150 pounds. I raced this year in a 110 pound wetsuit, just a DHB one, and I won um, London Try in my age group and some other bits and pieces, so the wetsuit probably won't slow you down. So my next point is nutrition. Uh, this is essential. A lot of people don't think about it, they think of equipment and bits and pieces they can buy, but nutrition for um, Olympic distance and up is going to be essential. There's absolutely no debate. Two hours of exercise, you're going to need to fuel, you'll need something to fuel, even if it's just water. Uh, and that counts as nutrition. If you're doing a sprint distance and you're going for like an hour or less or slightly more, then you don't technically need to fuel. I like to fuel on the bike just a little bit. It's not technically needed, um, but I like to have it. But Olympic and bigger distance, you're going to need nutrition, you're going to need to plan it out, and you're going to need to buy some stuff in for that. So the most common way to take in nutrition is on the bike section. Obviously the swim section is fairly quick, and you can't physically take anything for that. So you're going to need to take gels or stuff in your water, whatever you usually do. I would not try new things on race day, make sure you test it out beforehand, I've made that mistake before. Try it out beforehand, and then you know exactly what you're doing on race day. Some people like to take gels on the run section as well. If there's feed stations, I usually rely on the feed stations for the run um, because I don't like carrying stuff. I fuel for the bike and then see what happens on the run. Next up is a tri bag. So in my opinion, this is essential. Uh, you're gonna be able to put all of your stuff in one bag for your transition in your race. So your helmet, your shoes, both pairs of shoes, uh, wetsuit, towels, anything you need. And on your back, walk into transition because obviously you're gonna be carrying your bike or wheeling your bike, uh, you can have all your stuff, you want it in a bag, so you can just get into transition, get back out, sort yourself out. So this next one really is a marginal gain, and it's elastic laces for your running shoes. So it's gonna save you a lot of time in that T2, just slip your running shoes on, nice and easy. If you're going for the sort of top end, uh, even, even the 
sort of mid pack, whatever you whatever you're doing, it's going to save you time no matter what. Even if it's a couple of seconds, that could be the difference between a couple of places. So being able to slip on those shoes easily without fiddling with laces, remember you're going to come into T2 quite tired. Elastic laces are a lifesaver. Make sure though you practice putting them on and off beforehand because there is a bit of a trick to it. So yeah, they're quite cheap. £1.50 off Wiggle or something like that. Some own brand ones. Elastic laces, go for it. And finally, we've got talc powder. I've seen a lot of new people uh, come to races without talc powder. I did myself, I had to borrow someone else's. So you put this in your cycling shoes and your running shoes and it's gonna allow you to put them on a lot easier. So obviously you're gonna come out with a swim, your feet are gonna be wet for the cycle, so it's gonna dry it off for that. Then your feet are gonna get sweaty or they'll still be wet for the run for T2. So tap powder in your running shoes is gonna allow you to slip it on a lot easier, especially if you're not wearing socks. Make sure you don't use too much. I've used too much before and it's just like made a massive clump in my shoe. So just a light sprinkle of talc powder is gonna make your life a lot easier in those transitions. So there you go. Those are some things that are essential to me for my triathlon racing. If you agree, then let me know by giving this a like. And if you wanna add something to this list, then put it down in the comments. If you enjoyed it, then subscribe for more videos just like this. And I'll see you very soon in the next one.